Get ready for the countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. All right, it's time for the Voodoo Chef Podcast, where we will discuss all things voodoo from the Voodoo Studios located right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida. So to all my booties out there, if you're looking for nothing but a good time, this is the place to be. Call your friends, knock on the neighbor's door, and let them know it's time to party like a rock star for the next hour. Join me and my guests and learn to voodoo like we do as we discuss our faves and the voodoo that we use. I'll put our guests on the spot as we ask for their top three and make sure and listen as we discuss some of our favorite war stories from the kitchens we've worked in. Sit back, grab a tall glass of your favorite libation, and enjoy this episode of the Voodoo Chef Podcast. What's going on, booties? It's the Voodoo Chef Podcast, and filling in for Big Eddie C is is the Voodoo Sue. What's going on, Lex? Hey, I'm it's back. <laughs> it's been a long time, man. You must be really busy. Keeping me busy. Just finished up Strawberry Festival and getting back to the bakery and prepping for the state fair. <laughs> you got a new hairdo. I got a new hairdo. Man, what's going <laughs> on? I got to tell you, yours looks better than mine. Thanks. <laughs> so, you know, this this week's podcast is kind of not a good thing that Big Eddie C is here, but how apropos, because this week we're talking about the high school recipe competition. And I always say competition, but it's more of a challenge. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you actually won this damn thing back in the day. Uh, what year was I it? I did. I don't even remember. I what? won 2017. Holy moly. Was that your, your senior? That was your senior year. That was my senior year, yeah. Man, time flies, and it 2021 right now. Yeah. People are looking at <laughs> probably. He's so dumb. Play, no, I ain't playing. I really don't know. Um, that's that's amazing. And I remember. Uh, let me see. We did a, a cinnamon roll that you stuffed with. Was that actually a Voodoo Chef Red year? It was Mission Red. It was. I did cinnamon rolls, red and cinnamon. And then I put bacon in it, topped it with southern gold and a fried egg. You know, those of you that, that, that are close with me, it's no fair that you, you know, you know my weaknesses because you cheat. <laughs> you cheat. But uh, yeah, you won the high school recipe competition challenge, Mission Red. And ironically, it's Mission Red again this year. And, uh, you know, it's great that you're on here and it's great that you're, you put it to good use and you actually... I mean, everybody knows your story, but we're not gonna we're not gonna hesitate to say it again. Graduated <laughs> high school, went to culinary school. Uh, by nineteen, you graduated with a degree in baking and pastry. Am I wrong yet? Nope, you're right. Uh, you you worked at some mad places around town. Ended up at a Lessie Bakery. Uh, by the age of twenty, you were the floor manager at a Lessie Bakery, and just turned twenty one. And it, it seems like every time I stop into the bakery, not that I'm going to the bakery that often, but, uh, <laughs> every time I stop in, it's like, everybody's like, where's Alexis? Where's Alexis? You're like running the show down there. Yeah. I know everything like the back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing and a bad thing. Don't get, don't get stifled in there. Make sure you keep spreading those wings. Uh, but it's just amazing to watch. Uh, you know, if you don't experience it, you really don't know. People who have children and, and they get to watch their kids, but you watch with different eyes. And no offense, you know, you're not mine, even though I claim you. Uh, <laughs> when you get to see young people go go through the process of, of high school, and I think you and I met when you were 14. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I met, I met Alexis when I was 22. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, we, you get to see, you go through the process and, and really grow into what you're going to become and then go out and go to school and put it to work and come back. And to have you guys all come back and, and allow me to call you my sous chef and you come hang out at, at Voodoo events. And, and it's really funny. No, no, no. He doesn't want that glass. He wants the 20 ounce glass. And no, he needs <laughs> one. Uh, you know, that, that's really sweet, and it, it means a lot to us. 
but uh, we're very proud of all your success and congratulations yet again on all your success. Thank you. I owe it to you. <laughs> I know you owe it to yourself. We just, we just pointed, hey, look over there. Look at this. Look at that magic trick. And you did all the work. So it's all to you. But, uh, you know, Lex, you've been gone for a hot minute. Uh, we've been, we, we do this segment now, the Halfway Hangout, and you got to see, you know, it's Mission Red again. So on the Halfway Hangouts, I've been cooking with Voodoo Red. Today, I did a very simple dish that anybody could do at their house. Uh, you know, coming up, I don't know, maybe for a better part of 10 years, my wife and I, and I say that, you know, my wife, Marie, uh, Angelina, I think was two, three years old. We used to eat at Don Pablo's like three, four times a week. And I love their chicken tacos. And it just so happened that, uh, my buddy worked at Don Pablo's and we started talking and as I was talking to him, I'm like, dude, man, you got to tell me how to make the tacos. So uh, I created my own version of the Don Pablo's tacos. And we make it with Voodoo Red. It's the most easy recipe on the planet. It's really easy to memorize. Four, three, two, one. Four cups of water. Three tablespoons of Voodoo Chef Red. Two pounds of chicken, boneless, skinless, trimmed. Your choice. White meat, dark meat, doesn't matter. And uh, one cup of your favorite pico de gallo. Choose hot, choose mild, doesn't matter. Just make sure it's pico, not salsa. We want that, we want all those tomatoes in there. And we kind of created this shortcut recipe of that Don Pablo's chicken to create amazing uh, tacos. And it, it's funny, I'm telling the story. We, uh, you'll get to see the video here in a minute. We actually made this at the, and I say we, Lexus, actually made this at, <laughs> the green egg, one of the green egg events, and we took first place at the green egg competition with a taco recipe that was really just me not wanting to give my money to Don Pablo's and make the tacos at the house. So uh, Lex, check out this video real quick. What's going on, booze? It is a uh, great day here in Florida. Uh, according to my lovely Apple Watch, not sponsored, 79 degrees. 79 degrees, almost 80 degrees. It's supposed to get up to 91 this weekend. So all of you guys uh, knee deep in snow, I'm telling you, this is the place to be. It, it's so hot, we gotta get one of these bad boys over here from All right guys, hey, it's a great day. We do got the screens up over here. So we can uh, check out who's checking in from where. Make sure in those comments you tell us where you're checking in from. Uh, tell us where you're at, what it's like. Tell us what you're cooking tonight. Tell us what you like about voodoo. Most importantly, share this out there with all your friends. LT, what's going on from Apollo Beach? Uh, this is right up you and Dave's alley, quick and easy tonight. Uh, something we can do at home. So uh, glad you're checking in. And of course, uh, this is gonna lead into one of our missions. So I'm glad you're checking in tonight. Everybody else, throw it up there. Where are you checking in from? Uh, most importantly, like I said, share this out. Invite your friends to come hang out with us right now. Because uh, we're cooking live. This is live. We're, we're standing right here at uh, uh, my back patio doing what we do. Uh, let's get started. If you were with us last week, you know uh, my buddies over at uh, Islands in St. Pete hooked us up with a bottle of double repo from her. Uh, so normally this is a sipping tequila. And we would just check this out and sip on it and enjoy it. Uh, tonight I wanted to do something a little different. If you've seen the show and you hang out and you watch, you know I love a double double shot margarita with a Grand Marnier floater. Love it. Uh, we use silver tequila normally for that. And we use the simple syrups and the limes. Some of you guys out there are using sour mix. Basically just acid and sugar, same thing. Uh, but I wanted to make what I call a clean margarita tonight. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put my bartending skills to the test here. And uh, we're gonna see what we can do. Tony Antonelli, uh, I can never say your last name, Tony. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, give, give your girl my best. Tell her congratulations on her uh, placing in the chef competition. Second place in her group, that's Rockstar right there. So uh, thanks for checking in. And all right, let's, let's make my uh, clean margarita. And like I said, you're gonna see my skills to the test. We all know that's my drinking glass. So, uh, first thing I'm doing, we get a little ice. 
just in my little shaking bread. Don't need a lot. Uh, just enough to kind of keep keep this wet. We want it to melt down just a tad. Water down our tequila just a bit. Like I said, normally we would only be sipping this herradera. Uh, I actually made some margaritas Monday night. And I ran out and I grabbed the bottle. I grabbed it and I was like, and I screwed the margaritas and I poured it over a potential ice cube and just had some nice tequila. But uh, tonight we're doing my clean margarita. We're gonna put some uh, some of the Curridor Double Repo in there. Double Repo, uh, 11 months in a barrel. They take it out, they put it in a clean barrel, brand new barrel, for one more month, and uh, rocking and rolling. Instead of our simple syrups or our, 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 our lime juice, our, our sour mix, whatever you're gonna do, we're gonna use some agave. Uh, and that's gonna be our sweetener, and that's what's gonna help us keep this a little, a little clean, if you will. Not all muddled with uh, you know processed sugars or the the syrups you're using. And don't get me wrong, I use them too. You know it's nice, quick, and easy. I make simple syrups, keep them in my fridge for when we you know want to make those old-fashioned, smoke the olds, or whatever we're doing. But uh, this is just a nice, clean version of what we're doing. Half a lime. Yes, I'm using my orange juicer, and it's because it's just easier to get the lime in there, easier to handle. We're gonna get a nice squeeze. I'm going to make sure I get all of the juice in there. And here's where my bartending skills, or lack thereof, come into play. I'm not going to sit here and do a dance. I'm going to get my glass in here, and I'm just going to shake it. Woo! None of that stuff, man. Not for me. We're just going to get this all shaken up, mixed up. We want that agave uh, to fully blend in and mix in with that tequila. I could be that guy, you know, we're going to shake the Presidente a hundred times before we get to your table. We just want to shake it up to where we get it mixed up. Because I'm not about to show. I'm about to drink. And real easy, guys. Just pour this out right over your ice. And uh, you can see that last bit of a valley coming out. Oh, man. Look at that. It's like syrup on a pancake right now. And uh, we get a nice, clean, refreshing, double repo margarita. This is beautiful on an 81 degree night. That agave just kind of smooths down that tequila as if this isn't smooth enough, right? But uh, just brings a little bit of sweetness, that lime juice, just enough to bring the tart. Uh, really hard to call it a margarita because it just has a real natural flavor to it. And uh, I hope you guys try this at home because, as my boy Dan would say, uh, this is Hollywood right there. Mm. Wow, we're going to sip on that all night. You know me, we're probably going to take another one. Another two. All right, so let's get started tonight. You know, we've been bringing out the green egg, doing the green egg a lot lately. We've got a lot of events coming up with Voodoo Chef. And again, if you're out there, throw those hearts, throw those likes. Um, I'm gonna keep checking over here. It adds air to the drink. That science, I'm shaking it up. Yeah, it does. Uh, doesn't, at the end of the day though, Brian, it all just goes down at the same speed, right? Um, I'm just kidding, man. You're absolutely right. It is going to add that air, that froth, and it helps froth it out and aerate it a little bit. Still super yummy. Um, I'll keep checking in over here. Keep throwing those hearts, those likes. Any questions you have, uh, let us know, and we'll do our best to get to them. But, uh, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we do if we didn't tell you about all things food. Uh, appreciate you coming to the Halfway Hangout, but let's start talking about what we got going on with food. If you have not heard, uh, we have officially reapply not for our caterer license, but for our mobile food license. And you will see a Voodoo truck around town real soon. So keep a look out for Voodoo Chef 13. And who knows, maybe uh, the little dish we're making here today might be something you see on uh, Voodoo Chef 13, uh, the truck that's gonna be flying around town real soon. Keep a look out, you'll find information on our webpage, voodoochef.com. Uh, always follow Facebook, follow Voodoo Chef, follow Eric Young's 13, follow Eric Young's, uh, do it all, follow us all. 
and uh, you'll get all the information as to where the truck's going to be, what specials we're going to have, and uh, it's going to be a good day. Uh, Jen, what's going on? Thanks for the fun day Friday. Teachers are still talking about it. Uh, if you did not know, a couple Fridays ago, right before spring break in Hillsborough County, Voodoo Chef Foundation, along with all our friends, all our friends, uh, Alfred's Food Truck, Kicking Caribbean, Wicked Oak, uh, Silver and Smoke, Barbecue, and uh, and uh, my boys are catering by the family, along with Voodoo Chef and Irwin Technical College Culinary Program. Uh, we all teamed up, paired up, and went down to Robinson High School and fed everybody in the building. Teachers, students, custodial, cafeteria. Uh, if some guy was visiting their kid that day, we fed them. The guidance counselors uh, just did it, did it up. And uh, it was nice to go back and give back to the everyone at Robinson High School for doing the amazing job they do out there. So, you know, Jen, you're saying thanks to us, but that was our thanks to you. Uh, keep doing what you do, keep rocking out, and keep hitting those kids, because that's what we're all about. I got some great thank you cards. Can't wait to read them. All right, so let's go back. Uh, Paul Compton's checking in. What's going on, man? What's cooking? Today we're doing something a little special. Haven't really announced it yet. We'll get there in a minute. Uh, all right, so food truck, Voodoo Chef 13, coming out there real soon. Uh, it was at Robinson High School. We got an event coming up where we're going to be feeding the firemen being the uh, fire departments of Pasco, Pinellas, and Hillsborough County. Uh, just getting our team ready to go out and hit the streets and make sure they do it right. Uh, so by going out and sharing with the community, that's a nice way for us to get some practice in. Also, uh, High School Recipe Challenge, presented by Kaiser University Center for Culinary Arts, powered by the United States Coast Guard. That's right, the United States Coast Guard. Uh, Put us put together the high school recipe challenge this year. Uh, the mission is Boo Chef Red. If you know any high school culinary student out there looking to kind of uh, spread their wings, kind of get to be able to create, which in the high school culinary programs they're not often allowed to do. They're you know following that road routine, that rigor, that curriculum. Uh, through the high school recipe challenge. We send them all seasonings. Every single student that wants to uh, compete in this process, we mail them their own Voodoo Chef seasoning, and they get to create a dish. They send us the recipes, they take photos, uh, they tag us, they post us, they flash us, they like us. And then uh, our board of directors, along with Kaiser University and uh, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard, we get together and we'll narrow it down and we'll actually select a winner. And the winner of the High School Recipe Challenge will receive a $10,000 scholarship to attend Kaiser University to study culinary arts or baking and pastry. Uh, the second place winner, $5,000, and uh, just for entering, we're going to get you a little something, something. So uh, enter in, get rocking and rolling. If you know any high school seniors that are out there, high school students, I don't care. Get them registered. I don't care if they're in Tampa. I don't care if they're in Miami, Tallahassee, New York, Alaska. Oregon, it doesn't matter. We're going nationwide. All they have to do is log on to voodoochef.com, find the high school recipe challenge, mission red tab, select on accept the challenge, and enter their information. We will mail them some Voodoo Chef Red because that's what we're cooking with this year. And uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Carl Miller just checked in. Cheers, Carl Miller. Here's to you, my friend. After a long 10 days straight, one of those days helping us beat Robinson High School, Make sure you check out Carl Miller at Silver and Smoke. Uh, Carl, I don't forget your number. Put it in the post there. 1937-22. Here's you, Carl. All right. Last thing I want to talk about, Voodoo, and you can find all this information at our, uh, at our website. You can learn a lot more by listening to the Voodoo Chef podcast, which you can find on our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube slash YouTube.com slash Voodoo Chef. Uh, check that out. Make sure you hit the bell, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever it is you do. Uh, be a big ding -a and make sure you follow us so you can get all the updates. Um, Silver and Smoke 11. Silver and Smoke 11. So uh, let's get ready. This year, right after High School Recipe Challenge, we're re-implementing something, we're doing, reintroducing something that we did last year for the very first time. Voodoo Chef Underground, 
Food of Chef Underground, we challenge our high school students to create some fabulous dishes in a short amount of time. Last year they had to create burgers, they had a 20 minute time limit to create, uh, I think it was uh, 5, 10 hamburgers, and then they were judged by the movies, and uh, we narrowed it down in a round robin competition all the way down to the best hamburger that we could find at that high school level, and uh, we did that by up in the states, they had to create 80 hamburgers, 80 portions of hamburgers in a matter of 40 minutes. And uh, they served them to about a handful of people from around Tampa Bay, Bush Gardens, uh, the aquarium, Wusoff Knives was in town, Hillsborough County Public School officials were on site, and then of course all the booties were in town. Uh, we did it up, did a big event, did it right, and at the end of the day, Strawberry Crest High School came out with a winning burger. If you see my obnoxious picture where I'm holding the burger, stabbing it with a knife, that is actually the winning burger created by Strawberry Crest High School, um, led by Chef Paul Bonanno, and uh, some big surprises coming with that. But we are going to be doing a uh, new Voodoo Underground this year. And everybody's been practicing burgers since last year. I think it's really funny because uh, this year we're flipping it up. This year the mission is tacos. And uh, they really don't know that. We're going to announce it very shortly. The only way they would know that is if they watch the Booty Chef podcast or, uh, you know, they happen to be a booty and they hang out with us all the time. So let's get busy. I'm going to show you how to make my award winning chicken taco. And uh, it's funny we say it uh, I was given an award by my next door neighbor in a call this at competition when we did a potluck and my tacos were awarded the uh, first to show up. Actually, I'm joking. I actually made these tacos at a very variety of different events because these are my signature tacos. And uh, we've done these tacos uh, a couple different events, and at two of those events, we were recognized as the first place winner in one event, second place winner in second, both of which uh, we were awarded and recognized with Green Egg. So, uh, you, know, you know, if you know the Green Egg community, they're a tough crowd. Tonight, we're doing them on the stovetop, we're not doing them on the Green Egg. I burned out my Green Egg tonight, it is still a little warm. If you're paying attention, you saw me drop some stuff in there when I came out. It's still a little warm, so it's holding my food warm. We're gonna do these on the burner tonight so you guys can replicate these at home. So first thing we wanna do is memorize the recipe. Four, three, two, one. That is the recipe for my tacos. Four, three, two, one. And I'm gonna show you how easy they are. So, uh, here we go. if anybody new is checking in, make sure you let us know where you're checking in from. Where you're watching from, what you got going on, how you're doing, what food products you like, what you're cooking, and can you really voodoo like we do? The answer is yes, right now. So, normally, when we're making a dish, we want to condition our pan. And what that means is we bring our pan up to temperature, then we add our fat, and we get our fat up to temperature. We are not doing a saute dish, we're not doing anything like that. Tonight, we are going to do a stew. So we're going to stew some chicken tonight to make our taco meat or our tacos. And the recipe again, I got this, I don't know if you guys noticed my new haircut. Um, it's kind of funny, I got this new haircut, but yet I got hair falling in my face. New cocktail. Ray, what's going on? Green Iguana. Check it in, I love it, man. Uh, do me a favor, get some, get a best of the breast and have it for me. One of my favorite wing sauces in town is Green Iguana's wing sauce. Uh, you know, it's the best. So uh, good to have you in, Ray. Appreciate you checking in. Uh, Going to be seeing you guys real soon, I think. All right, let's eat some food here. All right, guys, here we go. Four, three, two, one. No need to condition the pan. Real easy, get your water in. Four cups of water. Four cups of water. So the four represented by the water. Three. What do you think, Green? 
High School Rescue Challenge is Mission Bread. Three tablespoons, Voodoo Chef Bread. Guys, this is the hardest recipe I make. Four, three, two, one. We're at the two. We're at the two. And I'm picking up the wrong ingredient. Two pounds, chicken. I use chicken breast. My girls like the breast. They don't care for the dark meat as much as the light meat. Uh, so I use chicken breast. We're just going to drop these right in. No need to brown them. I cleaned them up. It's two pounds. So I cleaned them up a little bit. Took off a little bit of the fat, trimmed them. And we're just dropping two pounds of chicken right into our stew water. Give it a little wipe on my hands, touching that raw chicken. Granola Ray, are you chilling at Green Iguana? Or are you working at Green Iguana? Alright, so now we're down to the one. One cup. Pico de Gallo. Now you're saying, dude, you poured in two containers. They're four ounce containers for a rocket ship. Come on. Stay with us here. Just kidding. Alright, so four, three, two, one. Four cups of water. Three tablespoons of blue chef bread. Two pounds of chicken. One cup Pico de Gallo. Guys, that's it. Your tacos are done. No more to do. No much. All we have to do is wait. Now, what we want to do, we want to get this, bring it right up to a boil. I'm just going to slide it out of the way here. We're just going to let that do its thing. There's really not much more we need to do with that. Uh, we bring it to a boil, and we're just going to let it chill. Once it comes to a boil, we'll reduce it to a simmer, and we're going to let it cook. Uh, we're going to let it cook in those juices, stew down, and as it does, that chicken is going to start to want to fall apart. That's what we want. As that chicken starts to cook down and starts to be ready to pull, we can assist it along the way. You want to get double forks in there and pull it down? That's A-OK. -okay. Uh, it's going to happen and it's going to be nice and natural. What we want to make sure doesn't happen is that all the liquid evaporates and cooks out. That is no blame. Uh, that's going to leave us with some dry ass chicken tacos. And that's not what we want. So, again, bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and just kind of nurse it, kind of watch it, kind of keep an eye on it. As it's cooking down and doing its thing, stewing up, this tomato's gonna break down, onions are gonna flavor through, and then we're gonna check it every now and again and check that break point of the chicken. And we wanna get it to the break point. Now, that's where you're gonna do you and I do me. I like large chunks of chicken. I don't like that shred where it's shredded down, looking like uh, imitation crab shredded out, or looking like shredded coleslaw that's perfect looking like it was done with a machine. I want big chunks. I want random sized pieces. Still mandible sized pieces, meaning we can eat them in one bite. But I want to get some nice texture to my chicken. I like it to vary. I like it to be random. So uh, keep an eye on that. And uh, shred it how you like. No rhyme or reason. Same thing with uh, I'm getting uh, getting some texts right now. And, uh, let me just shut those out and we'll answer here a bit later. He wants to know if I prefer pumpernickel marble rye or Jewish rye for grilled salmon. Well, Eric, if you were watching right now, you'd get to know your answer right away. Uh, it depends on what the hell the salmon is. You know, it depends on what I'm making the sandwich out of. What am I putting in there? You know, roast beef, I'm going to want that marble, marble rye. If I'm doing a, a Reuben, I want that straight rye. You know, it's just all berries. I'll tell you right now, I don't need any rye. You go with my hurry to clean my All right, guys. Let's talk about building tacos now. 
Now, when I did this event, when I did these tacos for uh, competition, if you will, you gotta imagine, I'm at a green egg event, I'm cooking my chicken down on my green egg, and I'm there with green egg royalty. Royalty, I'm standing next to Doc Barton. Stand next to Ray Lambie. And here I am, you know, just Rando Joe, hanging out. If you know me, you know I had a bottle in my pan, I'm hanging out, drinking, having a good time, doing what we do. And Ray's over there, and Ray's just like, yeah, I'm gonna make some pizzas. I'm not in the competition, I'm like, competition? He goes, yeah, it's competition. You know, Eric's not friendly barbecue competition kind of guy. Uh, I still didn't go for the throat muscles, and uh, that really isn't uh, how, how it's generally played. It's generally friendly banter and everybody hanging out. You know, I was like, oh shit, I gotta win me a competition here. It's all good. It's all good. They're all my buddies. They're all my pals. Uh, they're way better green eggers than I am. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hangout kind of guy. I'm a chill. But uh, great people. Normally we did this on there. We're cooking it up tonight. Let's get going. I've got this keeping stuff warm. I'm gonna break it out. Now, again, these are just warm. You're gonna want to, I get yelled at all the time for not using towels and rags, but again, just warm. So what I wanna do, let me get my, all right, let's see here. Uh, serving rib roast for Easter with mashed potatoes, which were requested. Need some vegetarian side ideas. I make the best vegetarian food, as we all know, Jen Rossage. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Vegetarian? Really? Vegetarian? No, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't eat vegetables, I don't eat fruit, it's not my thing. Uh, we all know the five food groups, butter, bacon, caffeine, carbs, and bourbon. And when we say bourbon, it's obviously all-inclusive. Um, Alright, hey, we're boiling right here. Let me just reduce this here down to a simmer while we're talking, hanging out. Uh, Jen, I'd be more than happy to send you my, my sweet potato hash recipe. It is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I'm just going to leave out the chorizo and you'll be good to go. Uh, just, just text me and ask me for that recipe. I actually gave it to somebody today for uh, Easter, so it's, they're doing a Jack Daniels Glaze ham. It's going to go great with that as well. Uh, you know, if you want some some vegetables, I've got some buddies. They love dirty Brussels sprouts. Dirty asparagus is good. Uh, got somebody actually does dirty green beans. I like bread on green beans going to bring that earthy, warm Southwest flavor. Uh, I don't know what, what you're doing for your bread roast, how you're seasoning it, but uh, just text me how that is, and I'll be more than happy to help you, and we'll talk it out and figure out what we can do, and uh, maybe even send you some food. Um, you know, Carl, I'm surprised he hasn't chimed in yet. He has been doing Zing Brock. You heard me right. Zing. Z-I-N-G. Uh, Zing Brock. And he uh, smokes it, and he says his family loves it. Uh, am, am I speaking wrong, Carl? If I'm speaking wrong, tell me. Uh, Zing is, if you've been watching the newest seasoning from the Voodoo Chef, we will be releasing that soon. We actually are using it tonight as well. Uh, this is probably the best you'll ever have. We call this B. R E B R E Best Ranch Ever. And the way you make BRE, real simple. It's so easy, it's not even funny. Two cups of mayonnaise, one cup of half and half, uh, one tablespoon of lime juice, one tablespoon of zinc. That easy. Again, what zinc? Well, you'll have it out in about a week, maybe two weeks and you'll be able to grab it. As always, you'll be able to find it online or you can grab it at any place you can find Voodoo Chef. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, our newest locations are Oldsmar and Odessa Ace Hardware. 
Uh, Vision Ace Hardware has picked this up, so check that out. Uh, that's again Oldsmar and Odessa Ace Hardware. Jump in, grab some of your Voodoo products, and uh, make some zing. The recipe's right on the bottle. If you're outside the area, uh, you know, take a look at your local places. Ask them if they're carrying Voodoo. If they're not, ask them to bring it in. Sprouts will not have zing. If you're in there grabbing your other Voodoo Chef products, tell them you want zing, and let's get that. Let's get uh, let's get it inside the Sprouts as well. All right. I gotta shut my mouth. I gotta make tacos. We are approaching six o'clock already, and uh, Wednesday night is a busy night for the Voodoo Chef. All right, so check it out, man. If you don't have one of these, grab one. It's the best thing to make two tacos, and it helps us assemble two tacos real easy. Take your warm tortilla and just set it right inside the container. Right inside. I wish they had one to make three tacos. But I can't find it. I can only find the one that helps us make two. Serving three tacos would be better, but we only have the one that makes two. So we're going to set this up like this to make two tacos because we serve uh, twin chicks. Twin chicks. Twin chicken tacos. And uh, if you want to get these, I'm going to tell you right now, they are on the menu for Voodoo 13, uh, which is our food truck coming very soon out there. Uh, you'll have to follow us, Voodoo Chef 13, Eric Young's 13. We will post where that truck's going to be and uh, how you can find us. Twin tacos, real simple. We cooked our meat. I've got some of it right here. I want to take this and I want to show you this. This is how the meat pulls when I cook it. You can see I've got small pieces, larger pieces, and even larger pieces but it falls apart when you grab it. So this would probably be one of the larger pieces we have. But again, they break down. They're so tender from that braised process. So if you want to shred it all the way down, power to you. I'm, when I'm eating my tacos, I like that, fun, that bite. I like the randomness of it. I like the texture. And that's why I do it like I do. All right, time to build, because uh, it is getting close to eating time. I got my boat because we're talking food truck, right? Uh, when you order Voodoo 13 and you order the Twin Chicks, Twin Chicks come with our cilantro rice. The best in town. Um, I remember when I wrote this recipe and uh, I gotta tell you, we've been using this recipe for probably close to 13 years now and it does not get any better so we got our boat built now we need to get our tacos built again warmed up pre-made just like that we're going to take our chicken and we're going to line it right inside our tortillas don't ever go to a Voodoo event, whether it's a Voodoo 13, whether it's a, a special event we're doing like we did at Dark Door Spirits not too long ago, or anywhere. Don't ever go to a Voodoo event and leave hungry. If you do, it's on you. Because I'm telling you, we built the plates like I would eat them, and that's the only way I expect my team to do it. And that's the way you should be getting them. All right, so now we've got our chicken in there. Let's go with the cabbage first. Um, just a little bit of raw cabbage. If you want to make some coleslaw and use coleslaw, A-OK, -okay, perfect. Again, remember, you do you, I'm gonna do me. This is the ingredients that we want on our tacos tonight. These are the ingredients you're gonna find on the truck, and uh, we hope you enjoy them. Then we're gonna hit it with our pico. Now, pico, you know, you can make your own, you can buy it store-bought. It's too easy to make on your own, but I get it. Sometimes we gotta buy more ingredients than we need, and we're stuck with the leftover ingredients. We generally do a three to one ratio on the tomato to the onion. And then uh, we add a little bit of, you know, jalapeno in there, just give it a little bite. And then cilantro, because if you don't like cilantro, you know, I don't know. 
Something's wrong with it. All right, if you want to do Cotija because it's hip and trendy, fine. Uh, we're going to go with this Mexi blend. We're going to drop our Mexi blend on here. Well, we've already got our cabbage on there. Cabbage is going to, you know, bring that nice flavor, that nice raw crunch. Uh, but it's not doing that thing that most of us Americans like when, when we look for lettuce. I mean, you go down to the taco hell, you're getting that shredded lettuce put on there. And even some of our other popular chains are putting, still putting lettuce on their tacos. I, oh, look at that, messed up. I love cilantro, and we're going to get to that. But before we do, we've got to zing these bad boys up. And we're just going to hit these with the BRE Ranch. Then we're going to add our cilantro. And I tell people when I go out to eat, I want you to put the cilantro on there like you're not paying for it because that's how I want to eat it. That's how I want to serve it. Uh, I absolutely love it. If you come to the truck and you're not a fan of cilantro, you better ask them to hold, hold back on it. Because when you come to the truck, you're gonna get a pair of twin chicks. They're gonna blow your mind. And they're gonna be loaded just like this coming out of the window. And this is what you can expect from Voodoo 13. I hope we see you guys soon. We're going to build a couple more tacos and uh, jump inside and make sure we take care of everybody. Feed everybody up, do them right. Sorry if you weren't on the like, uh, list this week. Maybe next week. Maybe next week. But most importantly, make sure you share the love. Share out our pages. Share Voodoo Chef 13, Eric Young's 13. Make sure they hit us with the likes, hit us with the follows. Get people onto the YouTube channel. YouTube dot com slash blue chef check out the podcast last week's podcast was amazing thanks dave thanks dave uh, i think you look amazing dave um dave thomas linda thomas two of our biggest supporters hey, this is to you guys man you guys are rock stars uh, thanks for all you do for the community make sure you check it out last week's podcast uh i say last week it was spring break it kind of drug on and we had some challenges getting the editing done. It dropped this morning. A wonderful, wonderful interview with a gentleman by the name of Jim Aishai. He is a Iowa farmer. He grows corn, he grows soybean, and he raises hog. And guys, these are the real heroes of America, the U.S. farmers, the backbone uh, of, of, our, of our country, you know, our, our food supply chain. And too often we walk right into the Publix, the, the Wind Gate scene, wherever you shop, fresh market, it doesn't matter. We walk in and we don't really think about where it's coming from. And, uh, you know, we all think about that little toy we had as a kid with little figures, the farmhouse, you know, the beetle wobbles, the old mate card, farmer Bob. Uh, but it was nice and refreshing to get to talk to Jim Aichai out in Iowa. Learn about what they do, learn about plant corn. He is a trip. And uh, make sure you check that out on Voodoo Chef on the YouTube. And uh, look, if you missed the video tonight, make sure you look for this video. It'll be cut and put the podcast uh, for next week, guys. Until next time, thanks for coming to the halfway. Oh my God, Lex, how easy are those tacos? I mean, you assembled them, but now, now you know the secret. Right, now I know I can make them at home. Easy peasy, two Four. seconds. <laughs> two, one, put them in the pot, let them stew down, golden. And then you just build them how you want, and that's the beauty of it. You do you, I'll do me. All right, no, enough about the chicken tacos. We <laughs> gotta get to the reason why we're here tonight. We're here to talk about the high school recipe challenge. Uh, Mission Red, and when you, back in the day, when you were around, uh, you're still around, obviously, and we love you for that. Um, you know, it was all about Kaiser University, sponsored by Kaiser University, presented by Kaiser University, and we've got representative from Kaiser University joining us today in the room, but this year, it's also powered by the United States Coast Guard. 
and we're going to bring them in and we're going to talk about all the cool stuff that we're all doing to help students. So let's get them in the room and start chatting it up. Oh my God, it's so great to get you guys both in the room. Uh, you know, not like either one of you need an introduction, but Chef Sam Selecta from Kaiser University Center for Culinary Arts and Chief Chef Andrew Rupp from the United States Coast Guard. Thanks for coming in today. How are you guys both doing? Doing fantastic. Excited to be here. Thank you. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. <laughs> it's Love a it. beautiful day today here in Tampa. A beautiful Monday. App Monday. Come on. Every day is Monday until Friday hits. <laughs> I really lost track of my days there. You really scared me for a minute. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. I know we do this on Wednesdays. What are you talking about? Uh, no, but it's, you're right. It is a great day. It's a beautiful day. Every day we wake up and our feet hit the floor, uh, especially here in the United States. And thanks, that's thanks to folks like you, Andrew, uh, Chief Rupp, and thank you for that every day. I know I say that all the time and you're going to get tired of hearing me saying it, but it's true. Thank you for what you do for all of us. Um, so uh, let's, I, I want to start with Sam though. And I know, I know you, you're, you're the new guy on the block with the high school recipe challenge, uh, but sure. Kaiser University has been there almost from the beginning. And uh, Chef Select has been part of that the entire time. Uh, and Chef, first of all, thank you for Kaiser University uh, being the presenting sponsor of the high school recipe challenge. We've seen some, some great food over the first four years and now we're entering our fifth year. It's kind of exciting. I mean, it's kind of like a milestone, uh, five years and doing this recipe challenge and we've got some amazing winners, one of whom sitting right here in the room with us, Miss Alexis Quinones. I'm super excited as well. Um, every year when it comes around, I, I get really excited to see what the uh, students come up with. Yeah, I get to, uh, sometimes I get to try some of it and I'm just <laughs> glad to see them, um, you know, move on and into college. You know, I, obviously I've been uh, teaching at Kaiser for almost 11 years now and seeing those new faces with all the energy and all the excitement and all the creativity, it's just what I look forward to every day. So, so let's talk about this. I mean, uh, I'm a little bit older than you guys. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> All right, a lot of bit. A lot of bit. Um, when I went to high school, it was still home ec. Here in Hillsborough County, I was actually uh, 24 years ago now, the first instructor taken from industry and put into one of those home ec roles to kind of start the process of changing the philosophy is home, of home ec into culinary. So I've seen a lot of change and a lot of development. As a culinary instructor at the post-secondary level, what have you seen with the high school students um, in your tenure and the creativity and the, the incredible stuff they're creating? Obviously, technology has a lot to do with it, but um, from starting out and until now, the progression is just phenomenal. The creativity has increased since the beginning. Um, they come in with a lot more excitement. And I think one of the best things is, uh, like you said, um, back when I went to high school, that this wasn't a thing. It was home ec, you know? And now these uh, students are coming in with prior knowledge, prior experience. Some of them have gotten into jobs or have the experience from their culinary classes in high school. So it's not like starting from trying to teach them how to boil water. It's actually starting them and they ask good questions. They're enthusiastic. They want to do more than just what we teach in class. Okay, well, they say after, they have a lot more excitement and creativity. Can we try this? Yeah, absolutely. But you have to get basics first, obviously. But I think it's just grown better and better to have them starting at a, a younger age, at the high school level. They have, uh, way more uh, experience and they really have a passion for it and you can tell they had it and they grew with it and then I get to see them in their peak moments. It's, it's exciting. Now, now two of the past three years, the winners came from Hillsborough County. So I've had the pleasure of knowing them at a different level, a personal level. Uh, Alexis being one of them and Jada Vidal being another. And mm -hmm. Jada actually won second place as a sophomore and first place as a junior 
and didn't enter as a senior because she wanted to give other students an opportunity. Um, She's just that sweet. Well, when we talk about Alexis's success, and we'll start with Lex, um, having gone through Kaiser and she's gone through and got her ACF creds in baking and pastry, uh, graduated at 19, and we, we, we've already blown her head up uh, at the beginning of this, and now one of the managers at Leslie Bakery, huh? and then Jada, um, you know, same, very young coming in, uh, entering high school, graduating at 19, uh, did her externship at Haven, a restaurant owned by the Burns Group. Burns, of course, one of the top 10 steakhouses in the nation. Um, and, and now uh, getting ready to just move on to some bigger and better things. Uh, how, does that, how does that make you feel knowing that it all started with this little recipe that they submit and now we're seeing them blossom out into the next generation of culinarians that are gonna be driving the industry like, like, like mad because they're amazing. Well, I, I always tell them not to make fun of me for treating them like my children, but I do. I'm so proud. It's like a proud mom moment. Um, it can be a proud chef moment, um, seeing how successful they are uh, right out. Um, especially because, you know what, I had to give props to my female chefs. You know what, I, it was hard for me starting out and I started real young, obviously. I don't look that old, but I am. Um, so I am just super proud of them to see them follow their passions and, you know, I'm just so glad to be part of it and say, maybe I made them smile one day. Maybe I taught them a little bit of what they know, but it really is what they, you know, what they made out of it. You know, not everybody goes to culinary school and is successful later on. Um, they took it and uh, basically they got more out of it than the average student for sure. That's awesome. You know, one of the things that at the high school level that I was always adamant about was it's equally as important for us to discover if this isn't for you as it is if this is for you. And if it's not for you, let us help you find the right path. Because, you know, to move them on to a post-secondary institution where, you know, culinary school is not cheap. And when you think of just all the money that goes into a kitchen, now imagine building five, six, seven kitchens so we can teach and train. It's not a, a inexpensive venture. So for us to have the opportunity, at least when I was teaching, to, to drive with that, that force, um, to be able to get those ones that do want to move on up to that level and know that they're in an environment like Kaiser University. And not that I'm knocking the other schools, but we have a very tight relationship it's just real nice to know that you guys are on that same wavelength, same mentality, and, and looking to make the best for each student as an individual and not the students as a class as a whole. So thank you. Oh, for that. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing and, and sharing your students and the, and the students that you know with us because, you know, we are a career focused uh, university and we really are students first. It's going to be always about that individual student. Um, the class sizes are never too large to where I can't point out uh, one student needing help or student excelling and giving them more challenges. Because, uh, we do have smaller class sizes and we take one subject at a time to make sure that they're understanding and they're focused and they stay focused. So. I mean, it's really our pleasure to have such great students. And, and, and just so we're clear out there, Kaiser is uh, in the top 50 culinary schools in the nation. And mm -hmm. uh, they have beaten out some of the go-to names that seem to fall off people's lips first, second, third. Um, Kaiser is in that top 50 and did outsource and, and outbeat a lot of those recognizable names that are out there today. So congratulations for that and thank you for all you do for the high school recipe challenge and students everywhere not just those students you guys truly are rock stars absolutely it's our pleasure and i say our because it's not just me it's all the other chefs as well that uh, i work with uh, we all have a, a vested interest in all of our students we want to see them succeed and, and we're the, all very proud the fact that i know all of your chefs by name um not because of who i am but because that's who you are. You sure. want people to know your chefs. You want people to know where their students are going. And, and the diversity amongst your chefs 
in every arena as far as backgrounds, ethnicities, uh, also training and skills. Just phenomenal. I can't say enough things about Kaiser University, and, and that's why you were the first group that we looked to pair with when we started looking to grow this venture. So, again, kudos and, and uh, rock star status. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and not to mention, I know, I know you're the head of the Sarasota chapter of the ACF. Uh, yes, I am. Because I am a member. I'm a card-carrying member. Um, yeah, good. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we're going we're gonna to bestow upon you a, a voodoo certification right now. And we want to make sure that behind your name with all those other alphabets you have, that you officially type in CBA. Because okay. you are a certified bad mamma jamma. <laughs> mamma jamma is an M, but okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, I like that. Can I put it on my coat? Absolutely, and I'll get All you right. a patch. <laughs> All right, yeah. I know. That's pretty cool, man. But uh, guys, I don't know if you know, you two are sitting with royalty here tonight. We lucked out. Uh, Dana had, Dana's competitive. He's out there all the time. Uh, killing it. And are you sitting Are you sitting uh, in front of your awards there? Is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah, I, I, I just got, yeah, just have a couple by me. Just a couple. Yeah, yeah but I think that one, that one over your right shoulder, that kind of looks like a fucking Ouija board, man. What are you doing? Casting a little voodoo <laughs> on your yeah, competitors no. there? <laughs> Dana, tell us what happened, man. All right, guys, we're back, man, and uh, we got to jump in. We cannot let this podcast go too long without getting the Ruppers in here. Uh, Chief, what is going on, my friend? How have you been? What's going on, Chef? Same old. Same Good times. Old. Now, we got to jump right to it because you and me, we're going to start ADDing and talking about all kinds of things. Uh, so Phenomenal I, things, of course. I, I want to I make sure that we talk about your involvement with the, the High School Recipe Challenge because this is the first year that you are partnering with us. And we're excited to say that the uh, Voodoo Chef High School Recipe Challenge is now powered by the US Coast Guard. And we're not saying the, the little station on the corner, you know, station 2917 in Tacoma. <laughs> we're saying the United States Coast Guard, and that is huge. And that is totally driven by you and your passion for culinary and education. And uh, talk a little bit about that and, and what excites you about that? And thank you very much. I mean, um, Coast Guard's unique. Obviously, there's a lot of programs out there, a lot of benefits, so forth, so on. Um, but the Coast Guard culinary program, just in general, there's only about 1,500 of us in the Coast Guard, roughly. Um, so it's a very small network. We all have the same mission, always see, feed people. But the uniqueness about it is you can be in one station or unit cooking for, you know, 11 people, or you can be at our culinary school in Petaluma, California, cooking for the entire base, which is, you know, 500 plus at any given time. Um, so, you know, there's so many different applications. It's not the, it's not the, in, you know, the same stuff that you see in the civilian world where, you know, you, you cook a menu and stuff like that. And it's all set up like that. Our a way we kind of operate and do business is the fact that creativity is key. You can do whatever you want. That's the, the best thing about the Coast Guard. You're going to have money to be able to play with, money to be able to do awesome, you know, exciting dishes. And at the end of the day, the only limit that you're going to have is the stuff you put on yourself. So, you know, I mean, I could sit here for hours on end and talk about Coast Guard Culinary. And there's so much more than just cooking to that, to that name, that title that you'll get. But at the end of the day, it's, it's one of those things. If you're passionate a little bit about cooking, I mean, Coast Guard is going to give you that and then a, way more than just that. And, you know, I think that's what, what, drawed, what drew me to you, if you will. Uh, you know, being an educator, I work with a lot of recruiters, and you and I talked about this, and that was the line you told me. Uh, I don't need to make a number. I'm not here to make a goal. I'm not here to force anybody to do what they want. I'm here to find people who have the passion for culinary 
because those are the people that are going to be successful in my Coast Guard. And uh, when you talk those words, that is exactly what we're about. Um, and, and that excited me because so often we just hear, oh, yeah, just come on in. Yeah, just come on down. And that's, that's what's different with you. You really want to find the people who are passionate about culinary and get them on those boats and cooking for your people. Yeah, because, I mean, food is morale. And if they got bad food, they're going to have bad morale. <laughs> they ain't going to be smiling like you right now, I'll tell you that. It and, be and some, upside something, down. Something else you said, which, which you really can't say, and I'm not really going to say anything negative, because working on an aircraft carrier, it has its benefits. It has its, its skill set, and it'll help you become a better culinarian. But at the end of the day, you're on a massive city that is cooking for 4,000 people. And you're cooking sometimes, I, I call it three square, they call it four square because they're cooking breakfast, lunch, dinner, and overnight. And they're just cooking and they have it set wraps. menus. And I've been on the bases and I've seen the set menus. And you're telling me your guys don't get a group of set menus or a cycle menu that they have to prepare. They get training, not that the other ones don't, and they get a budget and they're told, go. And that's like training them to be a restaurateur, training them to be a chef, training them to be an entrepreneur. And that is so key. You're training them to think, not do. Yeah, I mean, and it's a well-rounded program as well. So, you know, the exposure is everything. They're going to throw somebody in, for example, as an independent food service officer or equivalent of a head chef that runs the entire thing by themselves. So cooking, cleaning, you know, menu planning, budget, budgeting, um, inventory, and just plating the whole nine yards from start to finish. They're all on them. So, but the cool thing about it is those types of individuals, they're not cooking for 200 people. They're cooking for like 11 to 20. if that. Yeah. You were telling me you cooked for like 17 or something. Ridiculous. Yeah. I don't want to to tell uh, chef Sam over there about what I used to do with beef tenderloin back in the day. You make beef jerky out of it. I'll tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had a few I had a few extra hundred dollars, you know, towards the end of the uh, month and I had to spend it. So my crew love beef jerky. So I said, why not? Why why buy this beef jerky that is probably, you know, has all kinds of preservatives. So I took it upon myself. Let's get the nice organic prime, uh, you know, cut of beef tenderloin at thirty eight dollars a pound and turn it right into beef jerky. It was the most phenomenal thing ever. Look at Lex. Lex is like she had an RBF up there. She's like, just serious, dude. Have you ever had beef jerky from Tenderloin? I have not. I'm willing to try it. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you, you're ready to make us some, man. I'll give you some jerky. I, we'll we'll do it. Dirty jerky. Oh, wait, wait. I'll get you some red because it's Mission Red. You can make yeah, us some Southwest jerky. Watch. Watch. Somebody's going to do that for their recipe challenge. <laughs> you're gonna oh, that. yeah. Don't, don't give too many ideas, but I'd like to try that as well. <laughs> Sign me up. Let's get some Coast Guard money. We can definitely do all the beef jerky we want. <laughs> all right. That's hysterical. Hey, uh, so real quick, um, because, you know, we get in here and we start flapping our gums, and we've already got people entering room for trivia, and I hope you guys know you're up for a round of pointless pop culture trivia, which today <laughs> is not pop culture trivia, but that's okay. Um, Chief, Chef, uh, and I'm, I'm talking to you, my friend, Rupp, Tell us about, uh, people might be saying, okay, so they're powering the, the Voodoo Chef High School Recipe Challenge, which is the winner is going to receive a scholarship to Kaiser University. How is that benefiting the Coast Guard? Um, and, and to that, when people ask me, I answer, education is education is education. And the more education that people get, whether it's through Coast Guard or through Kaiser University, through Irwin Technical College, CIA, Johnson & Wales, HCC, you just keep naming them. It doesn't matter. There's the right fit for the right person. But with the United States Coast Guard, the more training you get, the higher signing bonus you get. Can you touch on that real quick? Well, it's awesome. I mean, if, if students go to Kaiser and they get all that baseline knowledge and experience that they'll get from the, the schooling there, the more I keep hearing about Kaiser, I'm about to sign up and go get my uh, AA from there as well. Try to use my tuition assistance, by the way, has bumped up 36%, so it's almost $4,000 a year. Holy cow. So it's gone up, which I can utilize, go to Kaiser, maybe me and uh, Chef Sam can have a side chat about that. Right. But 
no, I don't want to get. Yeah, no, we're gonna switch. Cool. I get your budget and the and the filet mignon, and and you can come to Kaiser. Only if I get a sweet chef coat like that. Only way I'm doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, Alexis has one like this. It's perfect. I'm ready. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You're used to wearing a uniform, I'm sure. We wear uniforms, and um, some of my veterans are actually some of my very best students. Uh, they're dedicated. They're there for a reason. Uh, they're utilizing their benefits. Um, absolutely. I have a, actually a vast majority of my students right now are veterans utilizing their benefits, uh, doing something that they're passionate about, whether it's a second or third career for them or something that they've already done, but they just want to get that degree. Um, we really enjoy having our veterans at, at Kaiser. Yeah. So, I mean, utilizing those veterans or, you know, new students that have never never learned anything about the Coast Guard. My biggest challenge is the knowledge piece at the end of the day. A lot of people don't know what Coast Guard is and then they don't know what Coast Guard culinary is. And then when they find out what it is and then they're like, holy smokes, we can slap you with a $40,000 bonus. Well, it's, it makes, I mean, if you look at it in a business model for them, it makes perfect sense. So, you know, if they come out of culinary school or, you know, Kaiser with some student loans or whatever the case may be, they can utilize, cause it's a lump sum. It's not, oh, hey, here's half. And you get a couple each year because I know some other you know branches do that. We don't do that. You get a lump sum about six months after you go back through our culinary school. But the cool thing about it is, is there are going to be rock stars because they have that baseline from you guys. And then what happens is when they're in that class, they're going to excel to the top. And you guys know, or you probably know, you know, military is real big on awarding its people, giving awards, giving honors, and stuff like that. So. For things like that, when they're named like honor graduate, that's a big thing. Because in the future, if they're looking to become a special uh, command aide, which is cooking for generals and admirals, um, they can utilize that past knowledge. And then they can utilize the same thing. Oh, I went to Kaiser. I got the AA. I was honor grad, yada, yada, yada. A lot of young folks, unfortunately, don't realize that putting in the hard work right off the bat will benefit them 100% down the line, no matter what you know, they do. And I always tell, I tell everybody, you know, you do it hundred percent. That's awesome. You know, that's, that's all we can ask for. But if you do that little extra, that little extra 10%, you had a hundred percent. That's what stands you, you in front away from the pack. You're in front of the pack now. So, and that's neat, but Coast Guard culinary is a lot of information. We got a ton of information out there for everybody. Where can we don't want to drown you guys with it, but we'll have it all on the seasonings, right, Chef? We'll have it on the seasonings. We got a printout for you guys. Give everybody on the podcast because we got a lot of you know people who aren't going to be joining the challenge. Tell everybody where they can find the information on the Coast Guard. So we got gocoastguard.com slash culinary careers. That's that's one way you can get to it. Um, we'll also have my information as well, so I can be an ambassador for it as well. It doesn't matter where you live. Um, nationwide, you can you can call me up. I'll get you linked up with either a chef in the area or um, a recruiter or a career counselor, whoever, whatever you need. The podcast, how can they find you? What do you mean? Uh, tell the people on the podcast how they can reach you if they're interested. Oh, in the podcast? I mean, you can give me a call. You want me to put my number out there? Is that it's up to you, man? <laughs> well, it's a government phone, so, you know. Uh, thank you for paying your taxes. So I'm good to go. So best way to reach me, my number is 727-543-0601. Do not call like him a, in order jerky. like an info commercial right now. Do not call him in order jerky. Sam, how do we find information on yes. the university? Make sure you repeat that three more times. We, I didn't get to write that down. We'll You're hear not. it on the podcast. Just go watch it. And we can all call up and order our jerky. KaiserUniversity.edu. <laughs> um, you can all... So uh, find me, you can email me if you'd like. I'll spell it out for you uh, because it is harder to pronounce my last name. So it's uh, Samantha Sakta is my name. So S-S-L-E-C-H-T-A and that's at kaiseruniversity.edu. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And I, uh, Alexis, try to follow along. Help me out here. You, you know how this doesn't work, but I think I got it figured out. I'm going to take out a student loan. I'm going to go to Kaiser University. I'm going to get my AA. I'm going to join the Coast Guard, get my 40G, pay off my student loan, do my time with the Coasties, go back to school on their dime, and get my <laughs> BA, take the leftover money, and open my, my food truck. I win, like, right? That's a really yeah. good plan. 
Aye, good plan there, Doc Dog. Hey, don't get too comfortable, guys. We got pointless pop culture trivia coming up. So, hey, I'm Casey Grello. I play drums with Queen's Right, and I love Booty Chef. It's amazing stuff. My wife and I cook with it all the time. Thank you, Booty Chef. Right, guys we're back and it's time for a little pointless pop culture trivia and we've got some of our weekly buddies here uh silver and smoke carl miller what's going on buddy oh hanging out actually we're rolling smoke tonight got a client in the morning yeah you've got some some gator in that smoker am i right yes gator queso and i got this amazing creole can you see it creole mustard dipping sauce just wait holy moly that looks good unfortunately it looks it looks so good, but in our line of business, we gotta like pack it up and deliver it to people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and we have our educational guru, Miss Lizanne Polito. How are you tonight? Hey everybody, I'm good. Ready to go. Uh you you had an amazing, relaxing uh Florida spring break, and I'm happy that you I got did. time to get away because we know your brain is so filled with all those educational <laughs> things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I will not pick on you with any educational questions today. I doubt that. No, I, <laughs> I am asking culinary questions tonight. Our topic tonight is uh, basic culinary knowledge because we wanted to see if we could ruffle our chefs a little bit. And uh, uh, filling in, I don't know if you guys noticed, Big Eddie C is not with us tonight. Filling in is Miss Alexis Quinones, former high school recipe challenge winner. Uh, Voodoo chef, sous chef, and manager of Alessi Bakery. So she will be the keeper of the trivia tonight. And, and Kaiser grad. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget that. If uh, you think you know the answer, you simply shout out your name. And uh, Alexis will call upon whom she hears first. And she is the final say. And I don't think we'll have any challenges because our buddy Sam is not in the room. So we should be good. Uh, if you know the answer, she will call upon you. You simply tell her the answer. She will tell, if, tell you if you're right or wrong. If you are right, you will score a point, and Alexis will keep score. If you are incorrect, uh, everyone else will then again shout out their name, and we will start over. So if you are ready for Pointless Pop Culture Trivia Basic Culinary Skill Edition, we're ready to rock and roll. And as always, the winner of tonight's Pointless Pop Culture Trivia will have their name entered into a drawing where they may or may not be selected the winner of a prize that may or may not be named at a later date. Question number one. At what temperature does water boil? Selecta. Selecta. Mm -hmm. 212. Ooh, I knew that one too. It's fancy. <laughs> Miss Alexis Quinones, is that correct? Sam's right. Uh, because Alexis is the keeper of trivia, we will take that. However, Sam, would you have accepted that on a test if they wrote 212 by itself? No. No, she would not. It's 212 mm -mm. degrees Fahrenheit. I would have. Well, she is my favorite I'm person, so I'll let it fly. Uh, I'm one of the most <laughs> lenient of all the like teams. It. Wait, where was all the niceties that were happening at the beginning of the podcast? Oh. It comes in and she's like, well, Sam is my favorite. You know, at the beginning of the podcast, <laughs> chef, chef, you know, chef, and now Sam's here. It's like, oh, she is my favorite. Question number I two. I see you all the time. <laughs> Question number two. What is the term used to describe pasta that is firm to the taste? Carl. 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 Al dente. 
El Dente is. Is that, in, is that in English? What's that? Is that in English? It is not. It's Italian for to the tooth. You are correct, but no points are awarded. <laughs> even though, even though you are Alexis's favorite, maybe maybe that, a half a point. <laughs> Question number three: What is the term for putting dry ingredients through a strainer to prevent lumps? Liz, Liz, sifting. Uh, that is correct. That is correct. She gets a point for knowing sifting, but uh, I don't know about for knowing her name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sam, were you being nice on that one? Because it looked like you wanted to jump in. I was being very nice. I'm just holding back. I think I got a little too excited in the beginning, and I shouted my name real loud, and I, I kind of scared myself. I was surprised you went for the three-syllable <laughs> version instead of the one. Is that because you're in uniform? Um, the three syllable, oh, when I have to teach students how to say my name and I say selecta instead of selecta. Right, but I wouldn't, I, I definitely would have gone for Sam because it's quicker to jump in. Yeah, I'm loud, so I don't really worry about the syllable. We have, we have a late entry into trivia. All right. We're going to bring them right on in. Oh my God, guys, it's the Poppy family. They just joined us and that's their official name, the Poppy family. Uh, and check them out at Poppy Zone. And you're just in time. Uh, we have only gone through 62 of the 437 questions in trivia tonight. <laughs> Getting you guys are maniacs. And you guys are perennial, so you know the rules. Uh, if you know Perennials. the answer, simply shout out your name. And as always, no cheating. We are on question number four of 13. So Carl, what are we saying? Santa got a chance. We're saying there's a chance. <laughs> You're saying there's a chance. Question number four. In baking recipes, what is usually the first step? Uh, Lizanne. Lizanne. <laughs> Setting the oven temperature. Your yeah. choice there, Miss Alexis Quinones. Is that correct? We'll let her have it, yeah. We will take it. It is preheat the oven. Nice. I would pull the butter out first, to be honest. <laughs> well, well, that's one of the four food groups. You and I, the butter's just on the counter already, right? <laughs> I want to wash my hands first. <laughs> oh. uh, Gather ingredients. Yeah. 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 You gotta wash that's, an, that's not a good question. <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> All right, question number five. And just so you know, these questions were taken from the official basic culinary quiz from Facebook. <laughs> question number five. Oh, so you know cool. it's legit. <laughs> you know it's legit. Yeah. Question number five. For a perfect hard boiled egg, how long would you keep the egg in the pot for? Flecta. Flecta. 13 minutes. That is a good answer, but not right according Alexa, to Alexa, what's the word? <laughs> Shout your name out. Copy. Copy. We go 12 minutes. We go 12 minutes, and that is uh, maybe two minutes too long. Dang it. Guys, you said 13. So You're out of the <laughs> Anyone else? So I'm not yelling, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. And her Alexa is answering back. <laughs> All right, since there are no other answers, even though I gave the uh, seven. The answer is seven. <laughs> so Facebook says it's ten. Where are you getting these answers? <laughs> I told you, this is, uh, right off the official basic culinary questions. Are these farm fresh eggs? What are we talking about here? Well, we're yeah, how big are the eggs? They're exactly. They're ostrich eggs. <laughs> the water is being boiled in Denver in a pot that is four times the size of uh, my car. And so, so 10 hours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I found them. <laughs> it's just I found them right there. It's just a game. Some farm fresh eggs. Not that I've seen that movie. That's my chicken eggs. All right, after five questions, Alexis, give us the story. 
Carl one, Sam one, Lizanne two. Lizanne is in the lead. Did you win the last trivia you were part of, Lizanne? I believe I did. I believe you did too. But just so you know, even though Sam was not there, he <laughs> did ask us to review the tape. <laughs> Question number six. What is the term for embellishing a plate with something decorative? Carl. Oh. Oh. oh Carl. Garnish. Garnish. That is correct. Montro. We have a tie game, but I am not the official scorekeeper. I'm just here. <laughs> Question number seven. What are the two most common items placed in water to make it refreshing? Lizanne. 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 Lemon and cucumber. You are correct. It's not ice cubes, guys. <laughs> they all said ice cubes. That was cool, Sam. It is refreshing with ice cubes. It is quite refreshing. <laughs> quite refreshing. And Turn not it off the question number eight. What is the term for adding salt and spices to food? Poppy. Poppy. Seasoning? Seasoning is right, Poppy! <laughs> Got one. Poppy is an avid Facebook user. Hashtag addicted to TikTok. Yeah! <laughs> Question number nine. What does it mean when you julienne something? Flecta. Uh -oh. Flexa. Slice it. The chef is in. You're going to cut it to a ma matchstick dimensions, two inches long, one eighth by one eighth. Okay, the, the too I much information from Facebook. Facebook is correct. <laughs> cut it into thin strips. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you guys could see that at home. She was holding up her ruler as she said that. Prove it. <laughs> I don't need a ruler. I use my fingers. Que Alexis, give us a score real quick before we move Carl. on to question number 10. Carl 2, Sam 2, Lizanne 3, Poppy 1. Lizanne is holding on to the lead. We have a tie uh, for second place. Poppy, the latecomer, in third. And uh, Chief Rupp politely allowing everybody else to answer all the questions. <laughs> so nice of you. Thank you. Plot well, twist. Oh, I'm not actually a chef. Okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Look at his face. Did Paxo get chips? Oh, We've been talking yep. about the chips. Yeah, well, let's, I want to see these chips. Fresh ass chips. We got some fresh ass chips. Did Poppy go get chips? Are those, those are some fresh chips right there. And some pickles up in here. Look at that. Poppy, yeah. tell us where we can find you on Facebook. You can find me at Poppy Zone on Facebook. What Same about all thing. other social media outlets? Because I'm old. Same thing on all the other ones. You can TikTok me at Poppy Zone. Hashtag TikTok me. I'm addicted to TikTok. I don't know if you knew that. Only the best content. Jeff Carl, where can we find you and Silver and Smoke? Silver and Smoke 11. On uh, the gram, Facebook, uh, on so, Twitter. So all the booties out there, hashtag booties, if you plan it correctly, you could get your fresh chips from Poppy and your smoked queso from Carl and just have an amazing night right there. Question number 10. What ingredient is usually added to bread to make it rise? Lizanne. Carl. Lizanne. Poppy. Would you call me? I wasn't paying attention what you said. <laughs> well, you, Alexis, where are you at? I'm right here. Lizanne was right. Oh, Lizanne. What's going on? <laughs> he takes the lead with even more. You're, you're like playing to win today. I am. Are you channeling your inner Sam right now? <laughs> yeah. It's fresh off spring break. <laughs> And she did relax on spring break. Uh, question number 11, which Lizanne has no chance at. What kind of question is it, Lizanne? It's a tech question. An education question? It, it is exactly. According to Bloom's text, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is a math question. Oh, no. 
I got to take a sidebar because Suzanne's doing a book study at school and, and I saw the title of the book. So we come into the trivia and I bring up according to Feet of Trust and Lizanne got so excited thinking that that was the real question. And it's, <laughs> and I felt horrible. I really did feel bad, even though it was funny. Um, <laughs> question number 11, how many teaspoons make up one tablespoon? Selecta. Selecta. Three teaspoons in a tablespoon. I am so, no, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I was going to say, I quit. I quit. <laughs> that is Tell me absolutely it's correct. And uh, I think we may be seeing a comeback here. Alexis, you might want to give us a score as we're leading into question number 12 out of the Baker's Dozen. Carl, two. Sam, three. Lizanne, four. Poppy, one. There's still a chance. Look at her. She knows it. There's still a chance. Still a chance. Was there supposed to be math in that question? I don't understand. Well, for Liz, <laughs> she struggles to one. Math sometimes. It's all good. Uh, what do you do to onions to make them sweeter? Selecta. Oh, Selecta. He's even sandbagging. I can see it. Uh, I was trying to give a chance. Caramelize. I mean, you caramelize, you cook them. <laughs> you are correct. You caramelize the onions, you cook them. You are correct. We have a tie. I didn't know what answer you were looking for. We have a tie game. Well, I was hoping somebody would say, put some sugar on them so we can. <laughs> sugar in there. <laughs> but you know. Uh, am I correct? We have a tie game? Yeah, we do. Question number 13. Uh, and there is no backup. We either end in a tie if we have somebody who spoils uh, or we have a winner here. Uh, what is the best seasoning and sauce on the market today? Carl. Carl. Voodoo Chef seasoning and spices. But of course. Carl is in with the correct answer. <laughs> Give me the dirt. Seasoning. Liz dirt. Didn't even yell her own name. Just yelled out dirt. That was rolling, awesome. rolling Nolo tonight. But as we have a tie. That, that was awesome. We have two names that will be entered into a drawing where you may or may not be selected the winner of a prize that may or may not be selected at a later date. As always, thank you, everybody, for playing the High School Recipe Challenge. Uh, wait. As hey, a wrong game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Kaiser University Center for Culinary Arts for presenting the Voodoo Chef High School Recipe Challenge. Uh, the United States Coast Guard for being the presenting sponsor of the High School Recipe Challenge. Until next time, guys. There you have it, booties. Another episode of the Voodoo Chef podcast. Let's give a big shout out to everyone involved with Voodoo Chef and all things voodoo, starting with Wustoff Knives, the official knife of the Voodoo Chef. And jamming up and down the streets of all Ybor City and Tampa Bay, ragged old souls. Thanks for letting me jam with you guys. And when those amps are cranking, the turntables are definitely spinning, thanks to the official DJ of the Voodoo Chef, DJ Don Pablo. Check him out spinning all across town, most importantly, at all Voodoo Chef events. Speaking of events, getting ready for yours? Check out Voodoo Chef Catering, custom-created events for every shape and size. Log on to VoodooChefCatering.com to get your information today. A great big shout-out to all my booties that are in the Voodoo crew. Thank you for your support. And, of course, we could not do what we do in the crew without all of our crew sponsors. First Watch, Chef Shane Shibley, thank you for believing in our mission. And of course, we can't forget Voodoo Mortgage. For all your mortgage needs, check them out at VoodooMortgage.com. Alessi Bakery, a Tampa staple. Drop in and check them out today. And our newest sponsor, Twisted South Food Truck. Chef Adam Jessup, thank you for what you do. And of course, all things voodoo are in support of the Voodoo Chef Foundation, providing culinary scholarship and feeding those in need. To find out more information or make a donation yourself, log on to VoodooChefFoundation.com today. <laughs>